Hey guys, so for today's lesson we are going to look at the surface area and volume of cylinders. Cylinders are not polyhedra, so but it is a solid. It's a type of solid with two parallel and congruent circular bases. And this is why it's not a polyhedron, because a polyhedron will not have any curves to it, only straight edges. So we're going to emphasize that by writing not polyhedron. So do not call cones or, um, or spheres or cylinders um, polyhedra. Um, that will be incorrect. You could just refer to them as solids. Okay, so let's look at some aspects, some characteristics of a cylinder. Um, a cylinder most closely re resembles the prism, except the bases are circles, not polygons. If the axis is perpendicular to the bases, then it is right. So what is the axis? The axis for a cylinder connects the centers of the circular bases. So right here is the axis. And this cylinder is an example of a right cylinder because this axis is perpendicular to each of its bases. So these are your little right angle boxes to indicate the axis is perpendicular to both circular bases. If the axis is not perpendicular to the bases, then it is oblique. So you've seen similar, a similar example with the right prism. And when it was slanted, it's called an oblique prism. Same with cylinders. If it's slanted, then it will be considered an oblique cylinder. So let's look at a little bit more um, with a look at more characteristics of a cylinder here. Um, so this, the top circle and the bottom circle are considered bases. And then this part right here is considered a lateral face. Now the lateral face is the entire part of the cylinder that wraps around it. So imagine a maybe a soup can. Here is the top, the lid, and the bottom. And then you wrap this, um, maybe it's the soup label, all the way around. Then that creates the cylinder, right? So when you unwrap it and look at it as a two-dimensional net, you can see that this right here is your lateral face. The axis here also will be the same measurement as the height of the um, cylinder when it's a right cylinder. And also because we have circular bases, then the center will connect to the outer edge of the circle to create a radius. Remember, the radii um, in one circle is all going to be congruent. And since this circle and that circle are congruent, then the radius over here and the radius over here will be exactly the same. All right, so let's look at the um, two-dimensional version of this um, cylinder. So let me zoom back a little bit. All right, remember what we said is that this is a base and this is the base. Now, since the base is a circle, let me take this out of the way for a second here. Since the base is a circle, the area of the base is the area formula for a circle, which is pi r squared. So we have two of those, right? And then we see a rectangle here. Um, let's think about what the length of this rectangle is. The, rec the length of this rectangle is actually the same distance around the circle because when you fold this circle down, this lateral face has to wrap around perfectly, um, matching the um, distance around the base. And what do we call the distance around the base? We call that circumference. So the length of this lateral face is actually the circumference of a circular base. Remember when you're finding the circumference of any circle, the formula for that is 2 pi r. So the length of this rectangle is 2 pi r. What's the width? Well, the width here is actually the height. The height of the lateral face, right? The height of the cylinder. So if you go this way, you have the height. And the height will just be represented by h, whatever the height is. So the height connects the, the top base to the bottom base. So when you pull this down and then you wrap this around, 
the height would connect those two um, circular bases. So then we also have this area here. If we want to find the area of this rectangle, which is length times width, right? So let's say we want to uh, find the lateral area. Length times width here, let's say we go with 2 pi r, and then you would multiply it by h. So the 2 pi r represents the length, the height would be the width. Right, so that will be useful to us when we are trying to find volume and uh, surface area. So let's go with another version of a net here, right? So, um, and let's just go ahead and look at the aspects of this particular two-dimensional view of a cylinder. We know that this is the radius, so let's label that. Okay, we know that these are the two bases. Let's go ahead and say that this is the net. This is the two-dimensional net version of the three-dimensional cylinder. Okay, and this is the lateral face. From here to here is the circumference of the base. This is the height. And that is it. Okay, so... Now let's look at the actual surface area formula for a cylinder. Like I said earlier, okay, the surface area are all the parts that are exposed. So this base, this base, and all of this added up together. So then the surface area would be this lateral area plus the area of the two bases. So surface area is equal to the lateral area plus the area of the two bases. That's a general formula, but now let's get a little bit more specific. So the surface area is equal to the lateral area. Well, we know the lateral area is length times width, 2 pi r h. So 2 pi r h, and then plus the, um, two, the area of the two bases, right? So 2 pi r squared. All right, so let's label this a little bit here. This right here is the circumference of the base. This is the height of the cylinder. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Okay. All right, and then this right here is the base area. All right, and then when we're looking for volume, you just need to take one of the bases and then multiply it by the height. So for example, let's say I have this cylinder here. You just need to get the area of the one base and then multiply it by the height. So this here is the area of the base. Well, the ba base is actually a circle, right? So it's pi r squared h. So this right here is the base area. And then this is your height. So let's go ahead and jump into some examples here. Example one it says, find the surface area and volume of a right cylinder with the height and radius given here. So surface area, okay, let's uh, think about that. That's the lateral face area plus the area of the two bases, but we know that the lateral face, the lateral area is going to be two pi r times h plus two pi r squared. So we're just going to plug in the radius here and here, and then our height is going to be 6, and that's all we need. So now let's just go ahead and simplify that. We get 2, so when we multiply that, I'll just go ahead and just to save a little bit of space here. You're going to do 2 times 9 times 6, which will be 108 pi, don't forget the pi that's there, plus and over here, you get 81 times 2, which will be 162 pi. Then, since these are like terms, you can add them together. You end up with 270 pi. And then um, the units are going to be inches and squared. Now, we need to find the volume of that same cylinder. Remember, volume is the area of the base times the height. Well, the area of the base is pi r squared. Multiply that by the height. So we're going to put the 9 here, the 6 here. 
So 9 squared is 81 times 6 is going to give me 486 pi, and then inches cubed. Remember, you can pause the video, try it on your own, and then unpause to see how you did. Okay, so for this one, it gives me the height and now a diameter and not the radius. So just a quick review here. If you have a circle and the diameter is given to you as being 6 feet, or yeah, 6 feet, then what's the radius? It's going to be half of it, right? So radius is equal to 3. So now we're ready to figure out our surface area, which again is 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. And then the volume is going to be um, pi r squared h. So we're going to plug in our radius, which is 3, the height, which is 12. So when we plug all that in and simplify, we end up with 72 pi here plus 18 pi. And then combine those like terms and you get 90 pi feet squared. And that is the surface area for the cylinder. Now when we go to find the volume, we need to plug in the radius, which is 3, and the height, which is 12. Then when you square that and multiply the height, you end up with 108 pi, and then it's feet cubed. All right, let's go on to example three. This time you're given a drawing, and then you have to discern what um, each marking represents. Um, this one's also asking you to find surface area and volume. So, all right, surface area, I'll just write capital S this time. Um, is 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. And then volume is going to be pi r squared h. All right, so the radius is given to us here in the picture is 2. Plug that in. And the height is 10. Connects the centers. That's the height here for this right prism. I mean, right cylinder. So then when you um, multiply 2 times 10 times 2, you get 40 pi plus um, h pi. Combine those like terms and you get 48 pi. They don't give us units, so we'll just say units squared. All right, the volume, we need the radius, which is 2. The height is 10. 2 squared is 4 times 10 is 40 pi units cubed. Okay, uh, for letter B, we see a net instead of a three-dimensional model. So this two-dimensional net, let's see if we are able to figure out what we need. We definitely need a radius. So let's take a look at what we have. They give us their circumference, right? This is the length of this lateral face, and we're given the height. We need a radius. So when they give us the circumference, we could figure out the radius. Remember, the circumference formula is 2 pi r. And they're giving us the circumference as being 12 pi, so I'm going to plug that in here. And now I can figure out r by dividing each side by 2 pi. Cancels out to be a 1, cancels out to be 1. 12 divided by 2 is 6, so r is 6. Now that I have my radius, I'm ready to plug it into my surface area and volume formulas. So let me start with the surface area, which is, again, 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. And volume is pi r squared h. So my radius um, we found to be 6. Our height we found to, it is given to us as being 5. So when you plug that in, you get 60 pi plus 72 pi. And you get 132 pi units squared. And then finally for volume, we have pi r squared. We know the radius is, once again, we found that to be 6, and the height is given to us as 5. So then when you square the 6 and multiply by 5, you get 180 pi units cubed. All right, let's go ahead and jump to the next example, example 3. We're actually going to um, X out um, problem A and D because they are kind of redundant. We've already done ones like that, so we'll just go ahead and skip right to B. 
Um, so B asks you to find the height given a radius and the volume. So if they're giving you the volume, we're going to use the volume formula to work backwards. So the volume, and since we know this is a right cylinder, the volume for any right cylinder is pi r squared times h. Um, so now once we do that, we need to plug in our radius and our volume. The volume is given to us as 288 pi equals pi 12 squared and then h. So this becomes 288 pi equals 144 pi times h. Let's divide this out. 144 pi, 144 pi cancels out to become 1. The pi's cancel here. And then this ends up being 2. So the height equals 2. We can write units. OK, and then let's go on to letter C. Letter C says find the radius um, once you're given the height and um, the volume. So once again, if they give you the volume, we're going to use the volume for formula, pi r squared h. So 80 pi goes here, pi r squared, and then we know 16. So what we end up having is, if we were to rewrite this, you could say we have 16 pi and r squared. We're going to go ahead and divide each side by 16 pi. Pi's cancel here. 80 divided by 6 is 5, so r squared equals 5. We're going to square root both sides to get rid of that square. We end up with r equals plus or minus root 5, but we don't keep the negative, so the radius is just positive root 5 units. Okay, and then going down to letter E. Letter E says find the height given the radius and the surface area. So S here standing for surface area. So the surface area formula is going to be 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. Um, so let's plug these in. 170 pi goes here equals 2 pi times 5 h plus 2 pi times 5 squared. So when we multiply all that out, we get 10 pi h plus 25 times 2, which is 50 pi. All right? These two are like terms, so I'm going to get those two together. I'm going to subtract. I want to get h to be isolated. So I'm going to subtract 50 pi from both sides. All right? And you end up with 120 pi equals 10 pi h. I want to isolate the h, so I divide each side by 10 pi. And then you end up with the height being 12 units. All right, and then for letter F, this one says to find the radius given the height and circumference, or the surface area. So the surface area formula is 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. So they give us the surface area to be 102 pi. And then we have 2 pi r times 14 plus 2 pi r squared. So when I multiply out here, I end up with 28 pi r plus 2 pi r squared. So now, right now, I don't see any like terms. This one has a pi, this one has a pi r, and this one has a pi r squared. So what I'm dealing with is a quadratic equation here. Now, I'd like to be, I know I'm going to have to factor, but it'd be nice if I could simplify this somehow. I notice since they all um, share a pi, I could divide that out. They're all even, too. I could divide by 2 pi. So I'm going to divide by 2 pi. So when I do that, I'm left with 51 equals 14r plus r squared. And since I want to solve for this quadratic equation, I'm going to subtract the 51 from both sides. And then I get 0 equals, I'm going to put this in standard form, r squared plus 14r minus 51. Since we have this linear term here, I can't just you know, put the negative 51 on the other side and just square root both sides. So I need to factor, which actually turns out it is factorable. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to be negative 51 and add to be 14. It happens to be 17 and negative 3. So then we know that the radius is either going to be, uh, when you set these equal to 0, negative 17 or 3. Um, it's not 
it can't be negative. Radius cannot be a negative length, so the answer is 3 units. All right, and last but not least, example four. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit here. All right, so here it says, Max decides to carve out a cylinder in a wooden cube. So imagine a solid wooden cube, and then the middle of it, there's you've, he's drilled a hole, um, and basically that hole is actually creating a cylinder. The cube has a side length of 10 centimeters, and the cylinder has a radius of four centimeters. What is the surface area of the cube after the cylinder has been carved out? So what does that mean? So the surface area of the cube after the cylinder has been carved out. So let's just do our best to draw a little sketch for, of this. We're gonna draw a cube. I'm gonna try to make it look three-dimensional. So you have this square front and then make it look three-dimensional. And then I have a cylindrical hole that's being carved out of this cube. And now it's asking for the surface area. So for example, let's say I have this cube here, okay? It's not the perfect um, example, but you see that there's a hole at the top, right? Now there's no hole in the sides, okay? But if, if this was um, a perfect uh, example for this, you would see a hole here, and you would see a hole here, um, and you would see a cylinder going through if this was a like solid piece of cube, not hollow. So when it's asking you to find the surface area of the entire cube, it's talking about these faces, but for these top and bottom faces, you'll have th these two circles um, cut out. But once you're inside the cube, this this lateral face, this lateral area of the cylinder is exposed, and that's considered part of the surface area. So we'll need to make sure we also count that when we're finding the surface area of the cube after the cylinder has been carved out. All right, so we'll start off with the surface area of the entire cube. We'll subtract out the two circular bases of the cylinder. So that's this piece right here, and then this little piece right here, you cut them out. And then we're gonna add in the lateral face of this uh, cylinder that's wrapping around. So for example, let's say this was the, um, the, this is the holes right here, you're taking those out. But this area wrapping around, that's still considered the surface area of, part of the surface area of the cube. So we're gonna add in the lateral area of the cylinder. Okay, so the surface area for any cube is 6x squared, right, or 6s squared, side squared, then minus um, 2 pi r squared, because the area of the bases are pi r squared, and then plus the lateral area. Remember that's the circumference, 2 pi r times the height of the cylinder. All right, so let's see what we can um, plug in here. It says um, it has a radius of four, and this is the cylinder. So over here, you can put a four in here as well as here. And then um, it tells us that the side length of the cube is 10. Well, if it's 10 here, it's 10 all over, right? Because it's a cube. So its height is also gonna be 10. And then you can put the 10 here too. So now when we, work this out, 10 squared is 100 times 6 is 600, minus 16 times 2, which is 32 pi, plus 4 times 10, 40, times 2 is 80, 80 pi. These are like terms, so we're going to combine those. You end up with 600 plus 48 pi, and then surface area, 7 meters squared. Okay guys, that concludes our lesson for today.